here in person uh, like we normally do this event. Uh, but thank you for understanding uh, that we have to do it by Zoom this year. Um, and we're just thankful for your understanding and patience as we figured out the technology, but we're so happy you're here. Um, the first thing I really want to do is I want to introduce our pre-K-3 teachers. Um, they are waiting outside my office and they're going to step in one at a time and introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about uh, their journey here at Holy Spirit. Um, and then um, I'm going to start with them so that they can get on back to the class. Um, so I'm going to step out and one of them will step in. It's so nice to see you. I'll see you in just a moment. All right. Good morning. My name is Chantel Smith. Um, I teach the threes. My class is actually called the Ladybug. So you'll hear um, several different class names as we go through. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to kind of give just a personal statement. So I am a parent here at Holy Spirit. I have a seven-year-old who started here as an infant. Um, and then I have my last one going through primary four right now. So I've been here as, I guess, a family of Holy Spirit for seven years and as a teacher now for four years. Um, I think what, what I've noticed now as a teacher and something that I've just grown to love about this school is um, our class sizes are so small. We're able to really tailor to each child. Um, and really in the threes, we're trying to foster that love and passion for coming to school. So you'll see when you move from the twos to the threes, that there's a lot of opportunity um, for leadership growth in the classroom with the kiddos. Um, they're learning how to make their own choices and just, you know, be tiny little beings that they're, you know, growing into being. Um, I would also say one of my other favorite things about Holy Spirit is just the faith-based curriculum. So we go to chapel here. Um, there's a lot of opportunities to just make sure that um, you know, the kids know that they're in a school where God is present um, and we're just constantly reminding them of that. Um, and I think the third thing for me that I also love is just the purposeful play. So we're not drilling down worksheets. We're really letting these kids like be with each other, um, learn how to communicate with their peers and, and just learn through play. Um, and lastly, I just want to say if anyone has specific questions, I know it's a little bit different during the Zoom. Um, I'm always available through email, we can set up another Zoom if you'd like to tour the classroom. Um, I know some of you may have not seen our school before, so we can always set something like that up too. Um, I really thank you guys for being here today and uh, enjoy the rest of the presentation. Hi, I am Amber Carruthers and I am the Teddy Bears teacher. I have been at Holy Spirit Episcopal School uh, in the same uh, primary school division teaching three and four year olds for coming up on 20 years. I think that in May, it will officially be 20 years that I've been with Holy Spirit, which is really exciting. As a matter of fact, we raised our daughter through Holy Spirit. And uh, even though we, we live in the neighborhood and uh, are zoned to Spring Branch, we chose to, to bring Anna Lee, our daughter, um, to Holy Spirit for lots of reasons. I was doing a neighborhood walking and uh, I kept seeing these darling children playing on the playground. Um, and I just thought, you know, I'm gonna test this, this place out. We, we came to the church we used to go to Palmer Episcopal in the um, Rice University area, but um, when we moved over here, we, we were looking for a church family and we came to Holy Spirit Church after I discovered Holy Spirit School's children on the playground. And um, I'm a member of the church now since then, um, Altar Guild member. Um, I was in the choir when we were singing. I hope to return to that um, volunteer job later. But um, we had Anna Lee here from the time she was here in the enrichment area. We began in the bunnies class and then went to the kittens class and then went to the three-year-old program and the four-year-old program. And every year we thought, you know, do we want to, is this the year we're going to leave for public? And it just never was because of the great experience we had as a family and we saw our daughter having as a student here at the school. 
She has now gone on to, from Holy Spirit's eighth grade, she went to St. Agnes Academy, where she was the president of the National, National Honor Society. And um, then she graduated magna uh, summa cum laude from UT's Plan 2 program. And this May, she will be graduating with a master's degree in education from UT. Um, and so she's starting the, the, the search for a job now. And uh, she's unfortunately focused on high school teaching, so she can't teach here at Holy Spirit. But, um, you know, we're hoping to keep her in Houston. But um, the thing that I guess I want to give Holy Spirit the most credit for is finding um, Annalie is my daughter's name, helping her find her own voice. She was a quieter girl growing up and an only child. And um, while she made friends easily, she didn't really speak publicly very easily. And Holy Spirit's theater programs and music programs and um, just the classroom situations in general provided her with lots of opportunities to, to speak her ideas. Uh, they taught her how to memorize, but also how to think for herself and have her own ideas and tell her own stories. And that's one of the things we love to do as the teachers in the primary program is let the children tell their own stories. And we write down those stories word for word. And they love to read them again and as a class book, but also one-on-one -on -one with the teachers for a little date. We can read their own stories back to them. And they just love that. And that's honoring their ideas and honoring their words. And every child loves to be the story, the star of the story. So and that's just you know, one of the many ways that we we have a one-on-one -on -one relationship in these smaller classroom sizes. As teachers, it's very fulfilling to us to get to know your children a lot better than you're going to be able to let their, uh, the teachers know the children in, in the public system with you know, 25 to 30 kids in the room. So I just love this school. I thank you for being interested in it. Um, it's an amazing place to grow and to thrive. And uh, I just hope you uh, have a good day. And thank you very much. Hi, let me take all this off. My name is Miss Lynn, and I've been in public education, education for over 30 years in Spring Branch Independent School District. I started in Michigan, and I moved here and was very blessed with education. I love early childhood. I've been a gifted and talented teacher in the district, an ESL teacher, and I found this treasure of a school four years ago, and I fell in love. They believe in all the best practices of children. It's like taking the child and working very individually on them, tailoring the instruction to meet them social, emotional, academic, physical. It's a powerful school and the team I work with is wonderful. Um, my group is called the Rainbow Fish and I really enjoy the threes. And I've been blessed as a lead teacher of the threes for three years. And my heart and passion are with the threes. They do so much with these little ones. We learn through play, purposeful play. So we do a lot of literacy and acting out stories through a real fun way with the threes. And I have one son who I'm very blessed of having my son older in life. And he's now at um, Rice University. And he too along learned through purposeful play when he was little and I just watched him grow. But I would be, I'm honored to be at this school. And if you have any uh, questions, my name is Miss Lynn, I'm a rainbow fish and I would love to have your kids next year. God bless, thanks.
Good morning. My name is Lisa Carlos and I am the llama teacher in the pre-K three program. I have been here, this is my second year. I have been teaching in preschools for a, about 16, 17 years. Most recently, I just came from Westview um, Methodist School and um, I taught there for nine years and loved it. And I came here because I was really drawn to the philosophy of the play-based learning. They really, really, or we really, really embrace it here. And one of the things I love most about that is that it really gives teachers, you know, play is the work of kids. And um, that's how they learn. They learn more by playing than you can even imagine. And so what I love about that, it really invites um, and is very exciting for us teachers to think outside the box and be creative and be able to tailor um, instruction for children that maybe need more or children that aren't ready. We can just um, provide some customization. Is that a word? <laughs> um, so, and, and this, the school really, really supports their teachers. Um, being able to embrace that philosophy and play, but play with a purpose. We, we step outside of the box. Like I said, I'm sorry, I'm gonna use that phrase a lot and um, use just these creative ways to engage these kids in this meaningful um, hands-on education that they learn so much more by playing and um, working with you and building and creating. And we do a lot of science in my class and a lot of acting out. Um, and it is, it is amazing. I mean, I just left the class just now and the things that they were picking up, <laughs> they're three years old, was just like blew my mind. And uh, we're just having a fun, fun time this year. And, um, uh, the other thing I wanted to say is the close, it was a hard for me, they asked me to pick my favorite thing about the school. And I've been, this is my third school. I've been doing this, for, like I said, like 17 years. So I was at um, St. Andrews Presbyterian in the Westview area and then Westview Methodist, like I said. And um, this school is very, very, very close knit. I mean, I probably know your children already because um, we, even though we're, in our zones, we definitely are so close that um, we know all the kids, the teachers partner together always, we're like a family. And we also partner with the parents. And so this is those two things, the play-based and the uh, partnership and the camaraderie and the family unit that we have at the school is just, it, it makes me happy to come to school every single day. There's not a day I come to school and think, oh, uh, yuck, I got to work, work with these kids or work with these teachers. It has just been a gift and I'm just so blessed to work here. So I'll see you guys later. Thank you. Hi again, everybody. Um, I think, um, I hope that you can sense um, how amazing our primary three team is. Um, they really um, step up each and every day in big ways. And I always uh, tell parents as we get ready for the start of the year and everyone's wondering who their teacher is going to be, you really can't go wrong because they all have a heart for children and they all have a heart for doing um, best practices in early childhood. And I just couldn't be prouder uh, to have them on my team. Um, and I realized as they were introducing themselves that I did not introduce myself. So for those of you, I know I know most of you, um, but my name is Whitney Zisman and I'm the head of primary school and early childhood. Um, you'll see me out in the carpool line here and there. Um, typically I am actually working the primary, uh, the PK3 and PK4 carpool line. So I'm usually on the other side. Um, but just know um, after our presentation that you can reach out at any time. Uh, if you have more questions or comments or concerns, just feel free to reach out. I'm certainly available. Um, but we're really gonna talk today about a day in the life in pre-K3 and at Holy Spirit. So 
Um, I'm gonna um, just move forward. Um, and just uh, like Florencia said at the beginning, if you have any questions, just feel free to put them in the chat and she'll manage those and jump in with questions as needed. And at the end, we'll have more time as well. Um, but I'm sure you sense from the teachers that um, we really do believe um, and we know Holy Spirit is a community. Um, you know, it's been an extra challenge this year with COVID, right? Um, I was telling the teachers just recently at a staff meeting that I'm so proud of the way that they've continued to create community, even though they're having to do it with their hands tied behind their back a little bit with masks and shields and parents not being able to come in the building. It really is an extra challenge not being able to do things like class parties and grandparents day in person and the children performing in chapel for their parents and all of those things that even with all of those restrictions, um, they still uh, step forward in big ways. And, um, and I think if you were to ask any of our pre-K three and pre-K four uh, families, um, they would just say and share with you exactly that, that um, they can see each and every day their children are happy. Um, we do have small class sizes. We're very proud of that. We do um, have wait lists in threes and fours. Um, and twos actually, well, actually all of our classes, um, but um, we cap the sizes. Um, we cap the class size on purpose because we make sure that there's two classes in every room, um, no more than 14 to 16. This year we capped it at 14 uh, because of COVID, um, uh, but typically the class size could be up to 16 uh, with two teachers in the room. Um, all of our teachers and beginning in pre-K three are, you know, degreed teachers, a teacher certified, um, all those qualifications. And actually most of our assistant teachers are as well. Um, I really consider them to be co-teachers in the room. Um, every room has uh, both. And uh, many of them are assistant teachers that really I hired in because they also are lead teachers and they hope that we grow and that they can be a lead teacher at some point too. Um, so uh, we really do pride ourselves on personalized instruction and of course I just love that picture in the middle just safe and happy children um, all the pictures in the slideshow most of them are from this year um, so you'll see a lot of outdoor pictures and of course the teachers are wearing masks but I just love that picture in the middle um, in the center too with the teacher hugging all the children um, we really um, I think one of our best qualities is that we are a nurturing environment and a loving environment. And of course, we absolutely encourage welcome and involved parents. That looks a little different this year because of COVID, uh, but we are confident um, that although this year is a little bit wonky with all of that, we are hopeful and confident that next year will be a little bit back to normal on some of those uh, things like being able to have parents on campus and things like that. Um, and I should just mention too, if you ever um, want to have a one-on-one -on -one type situation where you, um, you stay outside, but kind of come around the outside, myself or Jen McMahon, I know would be happy to kind of do our best to give you a shortened outside version of the tour. Um, we're starting to do that slowly this spring. We can't do the big open house or the big tour together, but um, we can one-on-one -on -one with masks and all the protocols uh, kind of walk the outside and you can peek in the windows and things like that. So this spring as we go, if that is something you're interested in, just let us know and we'll work uh, to accommodate you on that. Um, so really each day, of course, the kids um, have an arrival routine. Something that's different in pre-K-3 is that they really start to manage their own materials. So when they get out of the car for carpool, they walk in and they're carrying their bag and they, um, the assistant teachers help them to their rooms. And then once they get to their room, they you know, put their bags away, get their water bottle, put it in the bin, you know, put their snacks in their cubbies. Um, there's always some sort of sign in. So you can see Miss Lynn, um, that was a picture from last year, but she, um, you know, at the beginning of the year, a lot of threes aren't quite ready to fully write their name so they can recognize their name and then, uh, you know, answer the question of the day. And then, of course, as they get older and as the year goes on, there they are signing in um, and writing their names as well. Um, and really, that's um, important for children to get a sense of independence, uh, you know, to put away all their things and to have that sense of responsibility. Um, in pre-K three, they start rolling up their own nap mat and managing their own materials. And it's an important part um, of growing up. But each day starts with a morning meeting. 
Um, the entire school, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, this happens in early childhood too, um, but in the morning we start with the Pledge of Allegiance um, and uh, that is led by lower school students who come on the intercom fourth grade and they um, lead the whole school in a prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, and then you can see too, we start the day with circle time, of course, and really just look for those ways to engage the children, make sure they're welcome, uh, greet one another, and just kind of prepare students for the day ahead. Young children thrive when they kind of know or when they do know what to expect for each day. Um, so you can see here on the bottom right, Miss Carlos um, is taking uh, news of the day from a student. Um, so what that does is that allows the children to come in and share their news of the day and she's modeling for them. She's writing their own words down for them on the paper. Um, so they're seeing things like, you know, you start at the top when you're writing your letters, you go from left to right. Um, my words have meaning and they mean something on the paper. Um, and then later during circle time, she'll read um, or let the child read their news of the day to their class. And as the year goes by, they start to recognize things like exclamation points and exciting and, uh, oh, we're gonna put that in quotation marks because sometimes their news of the day might say, you know, mom said or mommy said. Um, so they kind of start learning the rules of grammar and all those, you know, official things, but they're doing it by just sharing their news and being excited to share with their class. Um, there's also the morning message. You can see our friend um, who's helping fill in the missing spots. Um, so each day the teacher has a morning message to let the class know today we will have music or today we will have um, art or we're going you know, outside twice today, those kinds of things. Um, and then of course we do visual schedules where the teachers have pictures of the actual children in that class up on display uh, doing the different activities of the day so that they can see each day when they walk in what they have um, on schedule for that day. Um, you can see Miss Smith here. She's taking a child's story as well. And we're going to talk about that um, in a little bit. I think you'll see throughout the presentation that we really look for ways to honor children's ideas and thoughts and words and honor them by writing their words down, um, that they are capable and able and important. Um, uh, another benefit of our small class size is uh, all of the teachers uh, do small group instruction each and every day. Um, so typically what that looks like, they'll divide the class into three groups. Um, so each teacher will have a small group with them and then there will be a third group with some sort of independent project um, or something that they can work on. Um, and so uh, that's a way that we can um, meet the kids needs, meet them where, they're, where they are. Um, you know, there will be some children who come in who are ready to keep writing or ready to, you know, move forward with reading. And there will be others that are still learning the letters in their name. And at three, it's all over the place. And all of it is developmentally appropriate and perfectly um, normal to have that variety. So something that is different in pre-K three than in early childhood is once they get to pre-K three, there's four classes and we take all of the pre-K three kids that are coming in and they are divided between the four classes, but they're all mixed age. So there's not like the youngest class or the oldest class. Pre-K three is the first time that they really are kind of divvied up between the classes. Um, and we love that because the kids who are slightly older, um, you know, can model certain things for the kids who are younger and they learn from each other. Um, and it's just a great way. It's really best practices in early childhood. So the threes is the first year that that happens. And then that will continue on as they go through. Um, even though they're in their own little class, um, over the years, they'll get mixed up so many times, they'll end up knowing everyone in your, in your grade. Um, and, you know, as, as we hope to um, post COVID, uh, we can't wait to get back to the day where classes can meet on the playground at the same time and things like that. Of course, this year we're doing one class at a time. Um, but it's funny, you know, the, some of those things are harder on us as the adults. The children don't skip a beat. They're waving to all their friends. They know all their friends' names. Um, it's just really wonderful. But you can see here, Ms. Carlos is working with a small group. Um, 
on the right hand, that's Miss Reynolds, and she's working with a small group doing some counting. Um, and then you can see too on the bottom left, um, there are some friends who are working on recognizing their friends' names. Um, and that's an important piece of some of our curriculum work with the littles. They're excited to learn which friend is, you know, which name goes with which friend. Um, it's all learning through play. And that's the important thing in threes. Um, so we do partner with Rice uh, University's School Literacy and Culture Program um, from honestly all the way from infants on up. Um, you know, as the children get older, like in pre-K three, they're able to do more. So while some of these concepts were introduced in early childhood and the twos, uh, really when once you get to the threes, it really starts to come together. Um, so you can see, um, you know, really the idea that Rice, um, what they do, or what we do, um, is research best practices in early childhood and then help the teachers implement that in their room. So all of our pre-K-3 teachers have been through the week-long uh, Rice University intensive professional development to learn how to bring those things into their class. Um, and then we also do ongoing professional development through them. I actually... I work for Holy Spirit, but I also work with Rice as well, um, doing a lot of presenting and, and uh, supporting teachers around the Houston area. Um, but really the idea is looking for uh, ways to bring in authentic reading and writing, um, uh, helping students develop oral language, but doing it in a play, in a playful, fun way. So of course we have a little girl, you know, she's, she's modeling the teacher by reading a book to her class. Um, I love the picture in the middle. He's put on an astronaut hat that he created and it was his idea. Um, and then he's having all his friends add and play and write and draw on it. Um, so we, we encourage our teachers to find out what the children are interested in and then help them bring that into the room. So in this particular case, this little friend, he really likes his hats. He makes hats, he wears hats. And so, um, you know, by bringing in supplies and encouraging him, helping him, that he was able to make his own, you know, astronaut hat. Um, on the bottom right, you'll see pictures where friends are drawing their blueprints for something they're building in the block area. Um, this is another concept that Rice uh, encourages is bringing writing around the room, not just having writing only happening at the writing center. Uh, making sure there's opportunities to have a piece of paper and a pencil or colored pencils or, or whatever, um, you know, in all the different blocks or in all the different areas. So you might have um, in the dramatic play area, you might have pens and paper for making grocery list or uh, making, uh, you know, checking in your animal at the veterinary clinic, um, encouraging children to write in that way. They're very much more interested when it's something that has meaning to them and that they are excited about rather than saying, hey, come over here and work on this worksheet that doesn't mean anything to you. Um, so we look for ways to bring in authentic writing opportunities for the, for the kiddos. Um, and it's funny, sometimes even like um, in that bottom picture, sometimes it is difficult to get some of our friends to want to write. They're really into building and, and being busy and all of those things. And then all of a sudden when they realize they get to design something and then build it, um, that will bring them in to picking up the pencil and practicing their writing. Um, so we also do um, story dramatization. This is another big part of Rice curriculum. Um, I love the picture on the bottom left. That is um, as some students who are retelling some stories from a story basket. Um, so the teacher previously to this picture has modeled that particular story. And then in the basket, there might be characters and different props from that story. And then during free play, uh, that friend wanted to read the story to his other friend and he's using the basket um, to help and basically scaffold him to actually reading. Um, the bottom right picture, of course, we were, uh, they were acting out the story, Jan Brett's story, The Mitten. And I love that. So the class was sitting in a circle um, and they were, the teacher had read the story and then it was time for the class to act it out. And so, uh, so if there's a dialogue part, you know, the, the students will actually, when it's their turn, uh, the bear or the mouse or the mole, they will say their line and their part. So of course they were all climbing into the mitten um, in that picture. Um, the two little boys at the front, they actually, with their teacher's help, they were um, acting out the story, the three Billy Goats Gruff. 
And they were actually, at that point in time, you can see to the right, the troll was hiding underneath the bridge and laying underneath the table and the two friends were on top and it was like the bridge and the story. Um, so this is a fun, the kids love acting out stories. It's a really fun way uh, to extend the learning from the books. Uh, because when they know they're going to play the part of, you know, the biggest billy goat, then they listen for the words that they're going to say when it's their turn to act it out. It all happens organically in the class, um, and it happens every day. So they might be acting out one story one day and another story another day, or they might do the same story all week, um, but all the children have a chance to jump in and tell their stories. Um, most of our teachers also, um, well, they do. They uh, will also keep a binder of all the stories that are acting, that the children have acted out. And so the kids can go back and refer to it when they go to their classroom library. They can look back and see the stories they've acted out. Um, and it's always fun at the end of the year to hear, because they will remember, even at three, they will remember, oh, I loved acting out Mortimer. I loved acting out the mitten. And they will remember because they're looking back at the pictures and um, it just helps make those connections. Um, of course, we look for ways to bring in writing to the room. I already mentioned, um, you know, doing the writing around the room. Um, but we definitely, you know, we meet the children where they're at. All the children have a journal um, where, you know, maybe during nap time, if they're not at, at children who sleep, they might have an opportunity to reflect in their journal or to read some stories. Um, and they'll keep that through the year. And of course, as a parent, you'll get that at the end of the year. Um, dramatic play is another big one. Um, we do believe in learning through play. Um, one of these pictures is from last year when the children had voted to create uh, their learning area to be Target. Um, and then they made all the name tags for their friends. They had their, you know, the cash register and the calculator and they were adding up how much things cost. And one little girl was excited to tell us that she spent $100 at Target. And uh, the other little girl said, oh, that's too much. And I thought, well, that's very appropriate because that's what happens when you go to Target every time. But um, in, the, in the top right picture or in the right picture, um, the friends were playing and they um, have a Medi Teddy in their room. And that um, is a, a Yoginos type um, thing. So all the teachers also do yoga training through Yoginos um, and bring that for ways to help the classes transition or whatnot. So in this case, the class wanted to send many or wanted to take many Teddy to the doctor, and you can see, you know, they decided after having an X-ray that he had crayons in his tummy, and so they were trying to figure out how to help him feel better. Um, so we really believe in learning through play because when the children are acting out these or playing out these stories, um, all that oral language comes tumbling out, and it's an opportunity. Uh, for them to learn more language. And I always tell all the teachers that we want to have interesting things to talk about, interesting things to look at in the classrooms. And, you know, I always tell them nothing makes me sadder than walking into a quiet classroom and twos and threes and fours, it should be active. There should be children talking to children and children talking to teachers. Um, and it's a busy place. Um, so uh, I just love those pictures to see. So another thing we believe in is process art. Um, you know, when they're tiny, tiny, little and early childhood, it's a little um, extra challenging. Sometimes it's, it's tempting to do footprint art and handprint art for, for things because they're not quite there yet. But to the greatest extent possible, we want the children to be playing with art in a messy way, experiencing the art for themselves. So it's not necessarily what the product looks like at the end. So I always say to the teachers, you know, they're not going to get their perfect little snowman on their refrigerator, right? They're going to get the messy thing that the children have actually made, not something that the teachers have made. So I love this. So everything we look at for art is um, open-ended, uh, messy, I was, you know, the kids will get messy, um, but I think this a messy day is a sign of a good day. Um, and um, of course, loose parts is a big part. Um, it's been a little trickier this year because of COVID, right? We have um, extra, you know, sanitizing requirements and all of that, but the teachers have still managed to find ways um, to bring in uh, loose parts and open-ended play to the children. They will come up with the most amazing structures and ideas, um, and really it just shares so much information about each child with the teacher. Uh, 
groups. And of course, free choice centers is another important part of the day. You can see um, some of the rainbow fish looking at their fish in their class um, and the collaborative art piece in the middle. Each child uh, contributed to adding to the spider when they were reading um, a book about spiders. And of course, the light tables all of the rooms have all of these features. There's always a, a library area, uh, the sensory bin, um, something interesting, the light table, an area for blocks. Um, so all of the rooms are set up the same in that way. Um, and, um, oh, I love this story too. This was um, so a group of boys who were looking at a picture of Reliant area. It was during football season when the Texans were playing. And so they wanted to recreate Reliant Center. So they were building, um, including they were trying to figure out how to do the retractable roof. Um, and that's the part that, you know, I tell the teachers all the time, you know, we can come up with these wonderful ideas and tell the children what to do or how to play. But when we listen to them and hear what they're interested in, they will come up with the most amazing things that we would never have thought of. Um, and I think that whole idea of just honoring their thoughts, words, and ideas is such an important part um, of Holy Spirit. Of course, outdoor play, we are blessed with a beautiful campus. Um, I know that you guys come in on the EC side, but when you look um, around the back, you can see we have plenty of fields. We have gardens in the back. Um, we have lots of space and open space, and we encourage the teachers and the classes to go outside as often as possible. If you want to do circle time outside one morning, go for it. If, if we can take music class outside or PE outside, we will. Um, it's always been a key part of our values here at Holy Spirit, but now more than ever with COVID, um, it's become even more important. And so just allowing children opportunities to move their bodies and play in big ways and um, you know maybe take snack outside um, and build uh, we have these big awesome blue blocks that are just it's kind of like big loose parts play they can build an, a crazy amount of different things in fact every time i walk out they've come up with something different um, so you can see just that open-ended play uh, with the blocks um, of course, they have chapel, and they've been having chapel in early childhood this year, too. I'm not sure if you know that, but Chaplain Susie is our school chaplain, and I so wish you could see our adorable uh, children's chapel. It is fully child size, so the pews are their size. It's just wonderful, um, but another blessing, I would say a COVID blessing, is that we've also started having chapel outdoors, and so we have that area outside. We call it the outside chapel altar area. Um, and uh, you can see a class is out there having chapel. So if the weather is beautiful, uh, Chapel and Susie has been taking chapel outside. And I will just have to say it adds another level of just wonderful because she can, all the children can look up and she can refer to the birds in the sky and the trees and, and God and how big he is and what a wonderful, um, that he loves us and all those things. And it just kind of brings it more to life even even it's just it's just a bonus um, the children be, start becoming chapel helpers so they take on like a leadership role in chapel there's always someone who helps carry in the cross or helps lead a song um, parents uh, are invited um, hopefully in person again someday to come and celebrate their birthday chapel with their child um, so that's a special thing. And I know even uh, this year, even with parents not being able to come on campus, the parents were still able to Zoom in to see their child celebrate their birthday at chapel. Um, and that's just a big key part. Um, you can see in the upper right, um, their Scout and Scamper. You may have heard your children talking about them because Scout and Scamper do help lead chapels uh, with the twos as well. Um, and so uh, Mrs. Daniels, our wonderful music teacher, uh, she is the voice of the puppets and she will help tell, help Chaplain Susie tell Bible stories through the use of puppets. Um, so Children's Chapel is a special time. It's, it's, you know, 15 minutes long, so it's very child appropriate, um, fun. The children look forward to it. It's just a special part of our community. Um, lower School Buddies, this is something that, um, Sadly, this year we haven't been able to do because of the not being able to mix, um, but I wanted to share with you about it because 
it really does reflect our values as a school and what we hope to do and where we hope to get back to. So um, every year, an older class will adopt a younger class. And honestly, even like the threes classes will adopt an even younger class. Um, and we love that so that they might meet outside for a snack or they might go on a walk to get on a nature walk together or they might meet out on the field or maybe, um, uh, the you know second grade will come and spend time in a twos class and do a special art project with them. So although that's on hold this year, um, we hope that it's back for next year. And and one of the reasons it's so important is we want every child when they're walking on campus to be known um, for everyone to say you know hi Hayden, you know hi Anna, and um, make sure that um, you know their shoulders are up because they're known and loved and it's a benefit of being in a smaller school. Um, and the same thing too, we start doing service projects in pre-K-3. Um, it looks different in pre-K-3, you can see on the right, they were uh, brainstorming ways that they could do a service project for others on campus. Um, so, you know, make their book buddies a gift or draw a picture for Mrs. Daniels, the music teacher, or uh, figure out something to give to another class. Um, in pre-K four, they, they're a little bit older and they actually participate in our blessings in a backpack, which is a big part um, of our church community and our school community. It's a joint project where the children pack lunches um, for children um, in need or for area schools that are in need and they deliver those um, out every Friday. Um, we do have on-campus field trips um, or special guests that come in, of course, the fire department and police department. Um, we love, love doing guest readers. We're so sad right now that we haven't been able to do it. I know some of the primary school teachers have been able to figure out a way to do guest speakers by Zoom. Um, so it's just not the same, but it still is a way to connect. Um, and so we, we want those relationships to happen and we want to foster that community on campus. So another big thing that's different in primary school is the children start going to all the enrichment classes. So um, although in early childhood they have enrichment, they do music and they do Spanish and they do art, it's built in within their day with their teachers. But once they're in pre-K three, they actually, you know, a couple times a week will have music class or they'll explore instruments. And Mrs. Daniels, you can see her um, in the picture leading um, and teaching the children. Um, they even in pre-K three, they start doing performances. Um, and that's always fun. So this particular picture was taken at Grandparents Day last year, I believe. And so the children, you know, the music teacher uh, worked with them and got them ready to perform for their grandparents. Um, so we are for Grandparents Day this year, the primary um, classes are still going to be singing for their grandparents, but they're doing it by Zoom uh, during their music class that week. Um, but, you know, as the children grow up, more things are possible. And it's just another, it's so fun to watch these kids who have been in EC since they were babies um, start coming into their own and finding their voice. Um, they also go to art class as well. There is an actual art studio that they visit with Ms. Day. Um, but she also looks for ways um, to bring them outside the art studio. That picture on the right uh, with all of them at the easels that was taken this past week. Um, and that's a, that's a threes class all outside uh, painting and making their way. She's doing uh, art and stages. So I think that day they were painting the sky. Um, so she's a wonderful uh, teacher for our children. And of course, they also go to PE. Um, uh, Coach uh, Marge and Coach Mitrell um, help uh, lead some of our PE classes. Um, it's really fun. This is separate from and in addition to recess and going outside. So we believe even on the days they have PE, they also will still have recess. So this is not instead of recess. Um, we think it's important for children to move. Um, it's really fun. They do all kinds of obstacle courses and activities. Um, you know, push-ups and exercising and stretching and yoga and all kinds of things are built into their day. Um, Spanish uh, is also one of the enrichment classes that they go to. Um, so here they are um, with Senora and learning Spanish. And, you know, although in early childhood, they have been learning Spanish all the way along as well, um, it becomes more form formalized when we get to pre-K three. Um, someone uh, asked me at some point um, if the children are still traveling to their enrichment classes, 
And this year, because of COVID, the teachers, the enrichment teachers are coming to them. So they might meet outside or they might meet in a different spot, um, but we're not doing something where all the children are going to the same room throughout a day. Um, so we're, we're looking for ways to get around that. Um, and then also uh, they go to library or the librarian comes to them. So Mrs. Broadus, if you haven't met her yet, she's absolutely wonderful and a gift to our community. I know um, she, in the previous time, she has uh, talked at parent coffees and things like that. Um, but she um, will also be a resource um, for your children, for your family, but also for our teachers as well. Um, if there's ever anything that children are interested in, she'll pull books, she'll help. Um, same thing with EC as well. She's a great resource for our community. Um, I, I think that one of the most important things that I, I hope um, and uh, train and talk with our teachers about is the whole idea that at Holy Spirit, we honor the students' thoughts, words, and ideas. And it was wonderful hearing Ms. Carruthers talk about 20 years ago with her daughter, that that was still a core value of our community, that uh, you know, helping children find their voice, that they are important, that we get down on their level and listen, that we help um, scaffold them to success, you know, in a social emotional way, um, actively, you know, and just work on developing the whole child and looking for ways um, to create hands-on experiences. In the bottom left, those, uh, the friends, they wanted to build a creation. It was like a rainbow, I'm sorry, a reindeer house that they wanted to create. It was over Christmas time. And then of course, there's Wesley with his, you know, astronaut um, hat that he was creating. Um, so just looking for ways to honor the children's thoughts, words, and ideas is such an important part of our um, philosophy here at Holy Spirit. Um, so I, and I, I hope I'm not stating too much, um, Florencia, I know um, you can jump in if I'm saying this wrong, but I'm pretty sure I know uh, that some point today, um, all of you are going to receive an email for re-enrollment. Re-enrollment's happening, all, it starts this week. And so some other grade levels have already started to receive those uh, documents, but I know pre-K-3 or rising pre-K-3 will uh, receive that today. And I just kind of, I wanted to kind of walk you through a little bit about how it is different than EC. So in early childhood, um, in our division, um, your children are attending school month to month, right? So at any time, you could uh, give us written notice and withdraw your child after 30 days. So it's a 30 days notice. Um, and so when you're enrolling for pre-K-3, you're enrolling for the school year. So although you can pay monthly, and we'll talk about that in a moment, um, the contract is for the year. So um, what's different in pre-K-3 than maybe EC is there's not gonna be children continuing to enroll all year. Your class is gonna be set at the beginning of the year, um, assuming we're full, which we you know, are. Um, so the class is set, the teachers are set. It's a school year timeframe. So it's from August to May. Um, and when you get your real documents, feel free to read through it all. There's a of information about you know, the contract and all of those things. Um, I have had some parents ask, you know, what happens if my job moves us to Japan or something like that? There are systems in place for those, uh, you know, situations where the board uh, can help walk you through that. So um, there are ways to uh, walk through that. But if you have any questions about the contract, or anything like that. Raynell Johnson through the business office is a great resource. Um, and then also, um, and I hope, I know Florencia has been taking questions on the side. Um, we will certainly do our best to answer as many questions as we can. And if we're not able to answer them, um, we will reach out to you one-on-one -on -one to answer them. Um, I just wanna say thanks too, before we open it for questions, just thank you so much. Uh, for joining us today. Um, I hope you get a sense for how much we love our pre-K-3 team. Um, I really call my primary school, they're my dream team, they're amazing, and I know you're going to fall in love with all of them. Uh, you really can't go wrong. So Florencia, are there any questions just up, up front? I can stop sharing my screen or I can leave it there. Um, is there anything uh, that we'd like to open the floor to? Yes, and I had a question from a parent 
um, that is asking about the masks. And although our policies and procedures, we implement them as the situation, the current situation, it's hard to predict um, what will happen next school year. But um, this parent is asking, do pre-K three students wear masks? Well, that's a great question. So we, the children do not wear masks in pre-K three. Um, that does not start until kindergarten. Um, the teachers do, however. Um, so the adults do, the children do not. Um, and we really followed the guidelines of our medical advisory board about that. Um, you know, when you're looking at a pre-K three room, they are in one little zone. They're like a family. Um, and, you know, as you know, if you have 14 three-year-olds, it's impossible to keep them socially distant from one another. Like they are together, they are in their zone. Um, and so we have found, um, you know, we're thankful, knock on wood, uh, that we've been able to stay open to the greatest extent possible. We all hope and pray for a time when the teachers aren't having to wear masks either. But it's really funny, the children just, they just keep playing and having fun. They never skip a beat. Is there another question, also, Sarah? I, yeah. I know, but um, I think we can open it up and we can, um, for recording purposes, we had muted everyone but we can go ahead and um, allow people to unmute if they maybe have a question. I just wanted to clarify about the uh, communication that they will, receiving, will be receiving today on re-enrollment. It will give them instructions on how to submit their electronic contract through our parent portal. Our parent portal, if you have existing students, um, in the upper grades, then you'll be familiar with it. However, if you don't, you'll have instructions on how to access your account and how, and it'll have you the steps to walk you through submitting the contract. So I just wanted to clarify with that. And right now I'm gonna go ahead and um, allow for um, participants to unmute themselves. If they have any questions or comments, feel free to unmute and share. Florence, yeah, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so that I can see the participants. Okay. So are there any questions that anyone would like to ask? Also, I was gonna just um, give out some um, information as I was looking at the, um, the dramatic play and the story dramatization. Um, our uh, early childhood parents are very used to at least watching what's happening in the day through Vitagami, our, um, our photo portal or our student portfolio. And I know that the teachers in uh, primary three, especially right now, because parents um, can't walk in through our buildings, they do a lot of that sharing through, um, I believe right now it's Seesaw, which is a great tool that has a little bit more capabilities to show all the whole learning process so that parents can actually witness that development and um, see it through their eyes. So they do share a lot of that, um, whether it's through Vitagami, which you're used to, or through Seesaw. Correct, Whitney? That is correct. Um, Seesaw, uh, once you get to pre-K three, uh, the teachers utilize Seesaw and it's a great, it's similar to Vitagami, but it's a little bit more functional as far as meeting our needs in early childhood and taking videos and sharing videos out. And then you can comment as well. It's almost like Facebook in a way for your class. Um, so it's a great way to stay connected. It's, 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 it's a wonderful tool for our teachers. And also Vitagami and Seesaw do speak because you're still gonna build your um, student portfolio through Vitagami throughout the years. So what we do is we transfer the information from one uh, portal to the other, um, allowing you to the journal your child's learning development. Yes, and something else too, I didn't mention in the body of the presentation. Um, a lot of parents ask about potty training and pre-K three. So officially, um, in order to start pre-K three in August, your child does have to be potty trained. Um, you know, we recognize that they're three and that, you know, when they come into their classroom, it's all new and they're learning routines and they're, you know, figuring out where the bathroom is and all of those things. So we anticipate and know that children will have accidents, of course. 
Um, but uh, for the most part, their you know, children are fully potty trained. Um, if your child is not close to that right now, it's okay. It's only January. We have all the way until August. And your twos teachers, I promise you, they are working on it and will partner with you to work on it. And it does seem to be something that creates some anxiety among some families and it's okay. It all will work out. And by the time August rolls around, your child will be ready. I also have a question that's, um, that's uh, I think it's come up before. For the summer, do the students currently enrolled in the, uh, the kittens and the kangaroos and the bunnies, they are still eligible for Camp Little Saints or would they roll over to KidVent? Yes, um, so for this coming summer, I would say that most of our families who need year round care uh, will stay um, in early childhood through the summer. Um, and then we'll start with pre-K three in August. Um, however, uh, we do, our school does host a kid venture on campus as well during the summer. And they do start taking kids at age three so there are scenarios where if, um, if you know, let's say, because many families sometimes might take the summer off from EC, they might have an older sibling that's out of school, so the little one doesn't attend school in the summer or attend EC in the summer either. Um, Kid Venture allows you the opportunity to enroll in a, a camp just for the week or just for these two weeks. Um, so you can kind of cherry pick when you would like to come. Um, if your child is staying with us in Camp Little Saints this summer, June, July, and August, you can't cherry pick the weeks, but you can cherry pick the months. So you could say, and by the way, all of the summer camp registration will happen later. It happens in April. Um, and if your child is currently enrolled in EC, your child has a spot in Camp Little Saints already. Um, but you will have an opportunity in April to say, hey, um, we want to attend DC, we would like to do it June, July, but then we want to take August off, or we want to take, we want to be in EC for June and August, but we want to take the month of July off. Um, or you can just keep attending just like you always have, and it just rolls right through the summer. Uh, summer spots are guaranteed for any of our students. Um, and then of course, KV is also an option uh, for those of you who want to cherry pick weeks. If that makes sense. And they have to be three for KidVenture, right? Yes, yes, they have to be three. And and really, in order to start pre-K three, you have to be three by September 1st as well. Um, and I know too that many of you probably have lots of just logistical questions about how all of this works. I see many names um, on, the, on the presentation that are families who already have children who are older or in primary school, you've already walked through the transition from EC to primary school. Um, and I'm sure if um, I can connect families, I will. I know many of you would be happy to answer questions as a mom about the transition to primary school. There are some differences. Um, it is, you know, more of like a school, so to speak. Um, you're registering for the year, right? Um, there's not a lot of transitions or children coming in or leaving through the year um, as, you know, jobs permit. Um, there are differences as far as um, uh, there's no, uh, you know, refrigerators and microwaves in class. It's more of like you're packing your lunchbox, um, more like you would think of when you were went to school. And um, we do have the lunch program available through Simply Fresh that continues on into pre-K three. Um, and of course, carpool uh, for our primary students is on the other side of campus. So at some point, if you ever just kind of want to loop around or before you come to carpool here, you can kind of see the carpool line on the other side. That's where the kids in pre-K three and pre-K four um, load in and out right by the library doors. Um, and really we split the carpools just basically to help get everyone in, in as quickly as possible. And the same thing at the end of the day. And what are the uh, normal hours for a school day? Um, okay, so, um, so in primary school, you can drop off as early as 715. Um, and that is included in tuition. That's not an extra charge. Officially, the kids do not go to their classrooms until 730. Um, 
And at 7.30, they head down to their classrooms and the teachers are ready to welcome them in. The official day at carpool ends at 8.15. The doors close, the assistant teachers come inside and the school day starts with circle time and like getting on with their day officially um, when carpool ends at 8.15. So carpool's like kind of open from really from 7.15 to 8.15 um, uh, in, in the morning. Um, after that, if you are running late, um, you would check in at the main office, so that's not on the EC side, it's the, it's the main entrance over by the flagpole, and you would check them in, and then they'll walk them back to class. At the end of the day, carpool up starts, um, the children start transitioning to carpool close to 3, and the afternoon carpool line is open from 3 to 3.30. Uh, beyond 3.30 for those kids who do need after school care, late care, uh, we partner with Kid Venture for pre-K three and up. Um, and so the kids, uh, you know, the, the counselors from KV pick them up from their rooms and take them and have special activities planned for them. And they do snack and they play outside um, and have fun. Um, it's, it's, I would say like this year, for example, out of the four pre-K three classes, Courtney, correct me if I'm wrong, um, that I, I think probably like 16 kids or so stay um, at Kid Venture um, uh, from all different classes. So um, it's a nice little group. And every year, of course, it changes. Um, but that is a way for, for working parents to be able to have the full working day. And also this year, it's been different, but we also offer um, enrichment classes for yes. the young students at yes. school. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. Um, in a normal year, we also do things like soccer shots and ballet and, and tumble tykes and all kinds of different activities. Uh, we really hope that we get back to this next year. Um, yes. For those of you who don't know uh, Courtney Stevens, I'm going to put you on the spot, Courtney. So Courtney is one of our pre-K three teachers, but she's also a mom of a two-year-old, Amelia Stevens. And um, so she um, is part of your mom world for rising pre-K three um, students. And she's here, um, but I know, um, I just know because she's amazing and wonderful that if any of you have specific mom questions, um, she's here to answer them. I just kind of put her on the spot. We didn't plan Hi. it. Um, but I also will share, be happy to share her contact. Um, in fact, Florence, if you'll add it to the chat, her email address, um, anyone's welcome to just reach out to her and ask her the mom type questions of, you know, things you really need to know. She's a great resource. And I also had a question on, can we still send breakfast like an EC? <laughs> no, we really, um, you know, of course, when they're three and they're walking in and they're holding their applesauce packet or their piece of French toast, the first thing the teacher will do is they'll come sit at the table and finish it. They're not going to take the snack out of their hand, but there's not a set breakfast time, if, so to speak, like in EC where they all sit down at, you know, 815 to eat their breakfast um, in uh, PK three at 815, they're starting circle time. But for those early birds, yeah, they definitely are finishing up their breakfast either in the car or as they walk in um, early. Whitney, I had a question about um, kid ventures and after school care. Do you have to commit to five days or can you pick like a number? That's a great question. Um, I think you can, I think you can cherry pick your days, but I don't want to fully commit to that because I think during COVID they've had some changes in policies trying to keep or limit the numbers of kids coming in randomly like they kind of have had a core group the whole year to eliminate cross-contamination and all of those things so I'm not sure what their plans are for next year um, but for those of you who and by the way in parent newsletters and emails as the KV information becomes available um, we will share that outward for our families who are coming to pri primary three. But if you uh, want to jump the gun and do some research now, you can certainly go to Kid Ventures website 
choose um, the whole, like on KidVenture's website, they'll have lots of different locations. So choose the Holy Spirit location. And when you click open that, they'll have information about after school care. They'll have information about their summer camps. And it's all kind of listed there. You can see kind of the pricing for what their options are for this year. I'm not sure they've released it for next year, but it'll be similar to what they're doing this year. And they also have a uh, customer service phone number, you could call and ask questions if you would like. And I think they also still have a drop off service as long as it leads to give them an advance. And I do, I think they have those drop off rates as yes. well. And that's what someone asked. In fact, it happened this past week, right? Um, and things do happen like parents get in a bind or they get caught in a meeting or they're across town. Um, so at 3 30, whichever kiddos you know aren't quite uh, picked up yet. They just go right on to KidVenture and have a snack and, and play with their friends. And um, it's kind of a, a, a way um, that your children are taken care of until you're able to get there. And then KV would work out how that works on payment wise. Um, some, um, some families, um, just so you know too, so this summer you have the option to stay in EC, right? In your, in your groupings that you're in now. Um, once your children attend pre-K three, so let's say next year they're in pre-K three, next summer, right? Um, they the EC is not an option, so they would be in KV fully for summer options uh, after pre-K three. This is the last summer that you have uh, access to the year-round through EC. And um, I just wanted to clarify all those. Um summer and um, programs through KV and others, we will um, probably share soon for registration. And also make sure that you check into the Friday family, the parent newsletter. We try to consolidate all important information into that one tool that you can refer back to. And you can also um, visit our website. Make sure you download the app. The school app also contains most of the all the documents and forms and uh, newsletters available in that one application. And so you can refer back to those newsletters to gain all that information and access and links to the um, to the providers. I'm, I am so thankful in some ways. I wish so much we could meet in person, but I also recognize because we are Zoom that more of you were able to attend. Um, which is also wonderful to as well.